Welcome back to another Making Plots video. I'll be uh, talking about coloring, and I also have a couple of questions from some local comic creator friends here in Columbus. Um, Ken Epstein is the publisher, editor, and writer for Nick's Comics. It's kind of hard to describe what his comics are like, but um, I like to think if Joey Ramone and the Crypt Keeper had a baby, it would probably look like Nick's Comics. I hope he agrees. Max Inc. is the creator of the comic Blink. His comics almost always feature Columbus as a backdrop, and he was instrumental in my decision to use the city for the setting of plot. If you like any of the deeper character moments and slightly more psychological aspects to the comic, you have Max to thank. He and I have story meetings at least once a month to swap ideas and critique each other's work, and uh, it's just been invaluable to have his help, and he's a great friend for helping. Uh, right now in the Columbus Alive newspaper, Ken Epstein is actually curating a comics page uh, there previously wasn't a comics page for a couple of years, I think, and uh, he's uh, he's doing that. And uh, Max Inc. is doing a six-week run of his comic Blink in that local paper. So uh, check that out if you're a local Columbus person. Okay, let's dive right in. So um, this is a, an older page that uh, I'm going to uh, talk about the coloring a little bit. Uh, this is a state. This is the stage at which you know I'm pretty much just doing the. Highlights and shadows, I've already kind of laid in the, the base colors, um, you know, for the skin tones and the shirt and hair and all that, and then I'm just going in and doing the highlights. I usually do the highlights first, and then um, and then add uh, shadows after that, uh, and then just kind of tweak back and forth. Um, I'm always using the little eyedropper tool as I go, uh, like picking, you know, this color, that color, and then sort of uh, finding the the middle colors between things to smooth it out or sometimes you know sometimes I'm doing smooth um, highlights and then um, hard shadows or the opposite you know it, it kind of depends on what the what mood I'm in for whatever panel it is and what I'm trying to trying to do I obviously don't want to over render uh, to distract um, anyway let's uh, let's get into the uh, while that's going let's get into the questions um, so Ken asks, uh, how do you pick the Columbus landmarks that you use uh, in Plox? Um, and that is a fantastic question. Thank you, Ken. Uh, I kind of uh, base a lot of the uh, scenes and story uh, around things that I've experienced. So most of the landmarks are places that I've, I'm obviously really familiar with, but um, they either are places that I've you know, gone a lot. Obviously, the, the places um, where the characters live are actually uh, my old residence. Um, every, I think every house and apartment in the comic is someplace I've lived in the last probably 15, 20 years since I've uh, lived in Columbus. So uh, Chad's uh, apartment is my old condo in German Village. Um, it was about a block away from my job my, where I worked and um, also nearby places like Club 185, which makes an appearance. Um, I think Kim lives in Kahana, and that's where I lived um, in the early aughts. Uh, so her apartment is my cousin and I's apartment. And then Anne and Edgar, uh, which is Roy's girlfriend and um, would-be stepson, um, they live in Dublin, Ohio, which is a little bit farther out. And that's where my cousin and uh, his uh, f now fiance Jen, um, we all lived there for a few years, probably from 2003 to 2007, I think, somewhere in there. So yeah, I just have um, a lot of the places are just really familiar to me. So I, I just wrote them into the story. And um, as far as like the the other places, like the the angles of the city and things like that, a lot of times it's just whatever whatever I want. I, w I really want to make the city. Uh, well, I think the city's beautiful. So, I, I any of the shots of the skyline, I'm always looking for interesting, you know, um, lighting and you know times of day that are fun. And obviously, it, I want it to coincide with what's going on in the, in each scene. So, if it's a nighttime thing, I you know I'll, I'll go out and take photos and try to find something, um, you know, fun that way. But yeah, for the most part, I'm just trying to uh, stay stay true to to places that I'm sort of familiar with. I uh, there was a point at which I think I. I was going to just, you know, add things that are really Columbus, uh, you know, that are famous in Columbus just because they are and not necessarily because I, you know, go there or enjoy, uh, enjoy that stuff or, you know, whatever. I mean, people will say, well, you know, I love Columbus, but why don't you put this in there? You know, why don't we put the horseshoe? <laughs> it's like, well, I've only been to the horseshoe a few times and 
I don't know if these characters would, would go watch football, uh, OSU football. So we'll see. Maybe someday. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, anyway, uh, I think now you can see I'm working on Kim, um, and uh, for the most part, her uh, her hair is uh, similar to the way I. I guess all the characters' hair is kind of similar to the way I, I um, treat Chad and Kim's hair, but um, they kind of have. <laughs> Hilariously, they have similar hairstyles. I don't know if that's um, on purpose or not, but I mean, it's on purpose as far as me being lazy and not uh, designing a very interesting uh, hairdo. I think that's part of the reason why I had Chad cut his hair because <laughs> I thought they have like the same exact hairstyle. So whenever they're in scenes together, it's going to be weird, uh, which will be coming up. Uh, anyway, my second question is from my friend, Max Inc. Uh, he asks, you're currently uh, 13 chapters into the story. Has your attitude changed towards making the comic since you began? Uh, and the answer is absolutely yes. Um, it's been really interesting to see how this uh, story and the characters have taken on a life of their own. Um, I I really my I someday I'm going to look back at the um, the outline that I wrote because I think it's going to make me laugh uh, as to how silly and and uh, one dimensional it was. I I just kind of I think I I didn't really know what I was getting into. I feel like I bit off more than I can chew, and then once I got into it, it was like I it was it, it's well it's really addicting. It's been addicting for me to keep going which is good because i'm not getting i'm not getting burnt out on it and it's a pretty long story so this first story anyway is gonna is gonna probably i think we're maybe at the halfway point i'm not sure yet there's some uh, scenes that i'm not quite sure if i'm gonna be able to fit in uh, and then there's other scenes that i may uh just sort of discover and that's what's been great is my attitude is is different in that uh, I thought I kind of had everything figured out and all the scenes that I wanted, and a lot of the scenes that I thought I originally wanted to put in are are just not appropriate anymore. And not that they're, I don't know, not that they're bad or or anything. It's just that they're. It's almost like the characters wouldn't do that now. Like now that I know the characters, they wouldn't necessarily be in that situation. And and for the story, they don't really need to be in those situations. So. Uh, it's it's interesting. It's it's been really really fun. And uh, and Max having asked that question, it's it's been great working with uh, Max um, on on the story. Just going back and forth on the story. He and I just have a blast uh, about once a month or so when things aren't totally crazy with uh, the family and stuff here. I try to make it. Um, and we we just really have a lot of fun getting into the heads of the, these characters and and his characters as well. Like you know making these guys as real as possible um it's so much fun it's really fun and it's easier just to kind of come up with things on the fly like hey you know i need this kind of beat or i need this thing to happen so that you know chad whatever maybe i need chad to come off uh, you know a certain way to lead up to a, a, a you know another another scene uh, and linking things that way. And now that I know him and I know Kim and I know Roy, and I know what they would do. And even the, the background characters, you know, Kim's boss and Roy's girlfriend and, uh, you know, these sort of ancillary characters suddenly have become really important. Uh, the scene I just finished chapter 13 was that came way late. Um, the whole sub story of Kim, you know, dealing with her uh, sexuality and stuff. That's been really scary and not uh easy but it's it's been sort of uh it has been it's been pretty natural it feels like again it feels like the character is telling me what she needs and what and what the story needs to do for her um and that whole scene really you know came out of that attitude so that's what has been really unexpected about making the comic is uh the the story and the character sort of coming to life for me and making it uh, really really fun that way uh anyway that's uh, gonna wrap it up i think for this um as you can see um the uh the uh page is is finished and um this is an older one i'm gonna try to do uh a, a couple uh more recent pages uh screen cap pages uh, as i go anyway um thanks so much and uh real quick shout out not a quick shout out but uh, i want you guys to uh, realize that the music um, that I have playing in the in behind this video is 
uh, is new, and it's a custom piece of music that uh, the great Eric Van Skyhawk uh, created for me. And I cannot thank him enough. Uh, it's it's been incredible. I I think it's great. And um, yeah, I he uh, he is. I am forever in his debt. He's he's amazing. Anyway, um, his uh, I've got the credits and stuff at the end. So check check out uh, Ken Epstein's um, page. Check out Max Inc's uh, art, and uh, check out Eric Van Skyhawk's music on iTunes. And uh, thanks again, guys. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>